previous video, we reintroduced graphs and some different types. Now it is time to begin looking at graph algorithms, more specifically, a collection of graph algorithms called centrality. In this video, we will cover degree centrality, betweenness centrality, closeness centrality, and how they are all connected and what they tell us about our graph. Centrality measures are often thought as popularity measures in graphs. They are often used to identify the most influential nodes in a network. Let's start with the easiest and most common centrality measure, degree centrality. A degree in graph theory is simply the count of edges attached to a node. Take this node for example. This has three edges, therefore the degree of this node is three. Mathematically, we can say degree centrality of a node V is the same as that of the degree of the node. Let's apply this to our whole graph. Higher values mean that the node is more central and important to the graph. However, this metric ignores indirect connections, so is often regarded as a measure of local centrality. A slightly more complicated centrality measure is closeness. The closeness centrality of a node is the average length of the shortest path between that node and all other nodes in the graph. Its equation looks a little complicated, so let's break it down. Let's start with this node again. We need to calculate the shortest distance of this node, which we will call V, and another node, which is Y. Here we have a distance of three edges. This sigma symbol tells us that we need to do this for all possible nodes Y. Now, if we add all of these together and substitute this back into our equation, we get our closeness centrality measure for our node where n is the number of nodes in the network. Now let's again apply this to the whole graph. A high closeness centrality score indicates that the node is best placed to influence the network as quickly as possible. Our final centrality measure we will cover is betweenness centrality. Let's calculate the betweenness centrality of this node V. Our equation for betweenness is the sum of the fraction of shortest paths that will pass through node V. Let's break it down. We can pick two other nodes on our connected network, S and T, which stands for source and target. We can see that the minimum number of hops between S and T is four. So we should count how many different paths we can take between S and T with four hops. We should also count how many of these contain our node V. We can divide our count containing V by our total count to get 0.33 recurring. This sigma notation tells us we need to repeat this step for all combinations of S and T, except where they are the same as V, the node we are measuring. We sum together all our results to get 20.33 recurring. You'll notice this is a lot larger value than the previous centrality scores, which is why you'll often find the number normalised. Let's apply this to the rest of our graph. Betweenness can tell us which nodes act as bridges between nodes in the graph. These have the most influence on the connectivity of the graph. Before we end the video, it's important to highlight what using a combination of centrality measures can tell us about our graph. If we overlay the results of degree centrality and between the centrality, we can learn some cool things about the nodes. These nodes, for example, have a high degree centrality score, but a relatively low between the score. We know that these are highly visible nodes, but they don't hold a unique role in the network. However, these two nodes, which have a high degree score, but they also have high betweenness centrality, and they play the most important role in the network. If we were to remove either of them, the graph would be fragmented. Centrality measures are a prominent collection of algorithms in graph theory due to their ability to calculate the importance of any individual node in the network, and this makes them vital for analysis of graphs of social networks. Thank you for watching our video on centrality measures and let us know what topics you'd like us to cover in the future.